Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast it's the Darkest Timeline podcast so you got me for the day. I'm sure there'll be games, I'm sure there'll be movies, I'm sure there'll be gym and something from the week that's gone by. So here we go, this is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. Right then, here we go, Cookie Cast, the darkest timeline podcast, so just me today, um, I'm not going to hang around on this one, I'm not going to dilly dally, um, everybody it, it seems to be ill at the moment, and currently my body's trying to decide if I am going to be one of those, so let's not hang around, let's get into the thick of it, good news everyone, I managed to find the podcast where I talked about cutting my hair off. So, I can officially delete it from this list and never have to wonder whether I actually talked about that. So, you'll all be pleased to hear that. Pretty sure I've been going on about that for weeks now. Um, so, uh, something happened in the last week. Well, that's generally how these podcasts go. I'll talk about something that's happened in the last week. Um, mixed feelings about it. Let's get into it. Had the first uh, dislike for the podcast. Um, it was actually for one of the YouTube videos. Uh, and it was for actually one of these podcasts, not for any of the others that we do. Um, very confusing thing uh it was a kind of oh why does why does the analytics say that there's we're not a hundred percent likes for the last month uh, strange unusual never happened before sort of thing um looked into it further uh looked at the youtube page um and it was showing like it had had a like um, I was like, I don't understand what's what's going on there. And like I say, when I looked at it further, it was actually a thumb down. Um, one of those things, when you start out podcasting, you have to come to terms with a, with a series of things. You have to know how much of yourself you're going to put out there. If it's a lot, you have to be prepared for what that brings with it. Um, you know, when you're talking football, it's not like you're talking about... Like, yourself all that much um if you do a podcast like myself where you are doing a podcast that's about yourself um you have to expect that people are going to take that one of a few ways um so i always knew that somewhere down the line there was going to be the bad um i imagine i've got quite a ways i mean it's not like not like we've only just started doing this this has been going a long time now a lot of episodes, a lot of podcasts. I think we're actually closing in on 200 at this point. By the time this goes out, I imagine we'll probably be in the region of 200. Um, so, you know, ain't my first rodeo. I've had massive amount of positivity, uh, lots of likes, lots of comments. All those comments were generally good, uh, very positive things. There was no comment with the dislike somebody suggested to me that maybe somebody had clicked it by accident um i don't know um if somebody had disliked something and then said why could have addressed it um but for me personally it was something that i had to sort of think about and go i'm gonna dwell on it um short version is no but it is something that's happened is something I thought I would mention. If the person that didn't like the podcast hears this, which I can't imagine they would, because I imagine if you dislike something, you're probably going to give up on it. Um, give me a shout. Let me know what it was that you didn't like. We can talk about it. You know, why don't you? Why don't you come on as a guest? Excuse me, with this little bit. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm afraid. So yeah. 
a, a podcast first for me a dislike and it was for me it wasn't like somebody disliked my opinion on a nfl podcast um it was actually me somebody disliked ha huh, can you imagine i'm such a charming fellow hey ho moving on so uh not been the best of weeks for um diet and things um it's it's one of those things that i find if things aren't going well if i hit a bump in the road it's an immediate go-to it's like fuck it i don't want to eat uh i don't want to eat a salad i want to eat you know bread um dough sugar um so yeah when you're on a diet that's no carbs low carbs whatever you want to call it um and you hit a bump in the road and it's a little bit like oh man um do i do i want more lettuce in my life or do i want a sandwich um so last week's been a bit tricky um last monday did the podcast went to the gym all good um tuesday don't go to the gym tuesday's rest day because uh double podcast usually wednesday uh there's a lot of coding and stuff last wednesday i was out i'll come to that in a minute so no gym thursday i oh, had all the podcast stuff to do thursday um by that point um yeah i was in a bit of a funk by that point so i was like mm, not gonna go to the gym friday was cheat day um and boy did i cheat Whew. unfortunately that cheat carried on that seems to be i seem to think that this isn't the first time i've sort of said this um yeah I think it's one of those. Unfortunately, it, it, it goes a little bit hand in hand. Um, when things are bad, it's hard to keep up the, the good. Um, I'm not falling off the wagon. Um, my intention, full intention, is to go to the gym this evening. Unfortunately, I am feeling a little bit ropey right now. Everybody out there in the world is trying to infect me with a germ of some kind. Um, and my body is trying to decide who's going to win. Um... But my intention is to go to the gym. Um, I'm not not going. Uh, and I've been, you know, on the diet and stuff today. So it was just one of those things that I was like, it was a bad week. And um, the diet took the hit, unfortunately. Um, coded another uh, couple of podcasts over the weekend. A couple of these podcasts. And it was a bit like... Man, for, for somebody who said he was going to give up on the whining, Jesus. Sometimes I... Um, yeah, sometimes... It just... I think it just flows out of me. Um, but then again, this uh, this was all about uh, therapy in a lot of ways. It's a lot cheaper, let's put it that way. Sorry, I'm hoping the caffeine will kill whatever is trying to kill me. Um, so, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I kind of think I should have invited Mr. Panos to come and do this today. Wednesday is uh, when there was when me and Mr. James Panos went out. So, going back a few months, I got an email from, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Ticketmaster. They're like, hey, here's some stuff that, you know, you've been interested in in the past that is happening in the future. It's like, okay. One of those things was apparently, apparently, though, this was the thing. Apparently, Skindred were playing Middlesbrough. The Middlesbrough Town Hall, also known as the Crypt. I was like, really? That's interesting. I'd be prepared to go to Middlesbrough to see Skindred. Skindred, I am... Um, it's that sort of thing. I'm not, you know, at this point in time, Skindred are the, probably the most played band in my car. 
um, as James Panos will tell you, because that's how he got into the band. Uh, every time he got in the car, Skindred was on, and after a while, he didn't mind that. Um, so, I like, um, I mentioned, so, this was the thing, something felt weird about the email, so, I had a little Google around, firstly, I went to Skindred's website, nothing on their list of tour dates said they were playing Middlesbrough, a lot of it said that they were playing places out of the country, I was like, hmm... When I did a bit more Googling, it turned out that Skindred were doing a one-off show for a charity. Now, at this point in time, I'm going to have to confess, at no point have I been aware what this charity was. The The charity people were there. Me and, me and Panas were like, who is the charity? We should probably look into it at some point. Never did. But they were doing a one-off show for a charity. It's like, okay, let me see. So, the tickets were £11. There was a book in charge of £2.25 or something. I think the, the grand total for the ticket was £13.25. 13 or something. Don't quote me. Doesn't matter. Obviously, you've got your travel expenses. Do you go on the train? Do you drive? Um, since I learned to drive, I've been very much a I'd rather drive. Um... So I'm like, I'm I'm kind of thinking that this is a no-brainer. The tickets are dirt cheap. And it's, you know, Middlesbrough's not a million miles away. Let's do this. Spoke to Paul Williams and James Panas. Offered it out to them. James was like, I'd actually be up for doing that. Um, Paul, not so much. So, got a little bit closer... Um, there was this thing where we'd got, um, got Ed some whiskey for his birthday. I'd paid for that. Me and Panas were going halves. Panas turned up one night to do a podcast. He's like, there's some money and there's some extra. Get the tickets for Skindred and let's do this. I'm like, I'll order them now. Ordered them, job done. So, brings us to last Wednesday, which was when it was. I was like, I'll drive. Um, on the Tuesday, I'm like... Might be good if I had the tickets. Had a bit of a scout round on the whole table. Was like, I don't know if I've received these tickets. Turned out I don't open my post, apparently. They were sitting there unopened under a thing for Virgin or something. So I was like, okay, cool, we've got the tickets, let's go. So, um, Palace came. We made the drive. Um, a nice drive, if I'm honest. Uh, it was... A something or other all the way there. Nice drive. Enjoyable. Uh, we got to Middlesbrough. We went and found a bar. Had a drink. And we were working on this timetable. It was like a uh, support band are on at this time. Then there's an intermission. Then Skindred will be on at this time. They were supposed to be on at like half nine and done by... Oh, they were supposed to be on at nine and done by half ten or something. And I said to Panos, I was like, I don't think they're doing 90 minutes. Uh, I was like, oh, they've got a decent back catalogue. I was like, they have, but I don't think they're going to be doing 90 minutes. They're quite energetic as a band. Um, we sort of went over, and as it was, the support band were finishing their last song. I mean, for, a, for somebody who has absolutely no time for support bands, um, that was perfect for me. I was like, cool. Uh, that, I, it's not, I don't have time for them, I just, unless I'm going to see the main uh, the main band and the support act, which I've done before, I'm a bit like, just just bring me the meat, just bring me the main, the main course. I don't think it was long, I think it was like 20 minutes after they went off, Skindred came on. The timetable that we had was way out. I think they came on at like half eight or something. Um, so by half nine, they were like, "Thank you, good night." They did an encore, and um, and that was that. They were done. So, in review, um, I'm I'm a big Skindred fan. 
thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, I have this thing about when you um, mix two genres. So for anybody that doesn't know, Skindred's like metal mixed with... I think somebody had called it like reggae mixed with metal, which I suppose there is that aspect. Um, I like when like metal and dance get mixed, stuff like that. Um, they're from Wales. Um, I don't hold that against them. Um, I saw Skindred. I was aware of their music. Uh, I liked a couple of their singles. Wasn't a huge fan. This is going back like 10 years. I saw Skindred as a support band, ironic, um, when they supported Rob Zombie. Went to see Rob Zombie in Manchester. Skindred were the support. And t up to that point in time, and to this day, I have never been to a gig and seen a support band get the crowd so hyped before. They were awesome. They played songs where I was like, oh man, I know this. I didn't realise this was them, that sort of thing. A lot of the music they were playing, I recognised. I was like, man, these guys are great. So, sort of since then, going back like 10 years, I was like, yeah, they were, they were good. Spoke about them a lot in the sense of, man, if you want a band that's going to get the crowd hyped, Skin Room. Um, six months ago or something, it might have been, I saw that they were playing in York. It's like, yes. Very much like the Middlesbrough situation. They were playing at York, they were playing at Fibbers, the tickets were dirt cheap. I'm like, yep, I am doing this. When... And they are just such a, they are a performance. They are a fantastic performance. Um, the, the lead singer's funny. Uh, there's a lot of like interludes. They play um, like, they play a bit of ACDC. They play a bit of, um, the, when we saw them the other day, they did Changes by Tupac. Um, Things like that, there's just a lot of interaction with the crowd. It's just a fantastic gig to go and see. And, I mean, let me ask you this. What can you buy for £11 these days? Apparently, a good night out. Um, but, I mean, in general. I asked Panas how much he paid for his, uh, for his cigarettes. Um, and he was like, more than the ticket. It's like, yeah, exactly. So, absolutely fantastic. Nice drive over. Um, parked the car. Kind of hoped I was going to come back to it, or at least it with wheels. But hey, you know, sometimes you got to take that risk. Um, parked up. Everything was fine. Came out. Car was there. Good. Um, just absolutely spot on. I would have happily done the journey and gone and, and done that again. I was thoroughly impressed. Mr. Panas enjoyed it, I believe. And, yeah, all in all, standout night. Um, so, yeah, went to see Skindred. They were freaking awesome. And that was that. So, now then, because I've not been to the gym as much recently, I don't think I've watched any films. No. Excuse me, just let me finish this and then. Films? No. I don't think I've watched any. Oh, I'm watching that Ron Perlman movie in the gym. Yeah, that is not a strong film. Uh, I won't review it until I've finished watching it, but yeah, that is not a strong movie. So let's talk games instead. As far as um, console games are concerned, it's pretty much been Borderlands Three, non-stop. I'll come that. I'll come on to that in a minute. I do want to talk about um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I think at this point in time, Breakpoint comes out in four days. Not to date this podcast, but I've just dated it. So there you go. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be Friday. So. Let me see. 
Uh, da, 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 da. The joy of having an Amazon basket. Unfortunately, the curse of having a very large Amazon basket means it's sometimes difficult to find things. Do, 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 do. Break point fourth. So, yeah, comes out in four days' time. It comes out on Friday. It comes out on the fourth of October. So I've, I've properly dated this podcast. Um. So, there was a beta this weekend, which I'm led to believe was a. I thought it was a multiplayer beta. But. I saw another like clip of it. And I'm not sure whether it was. I think it might have just been another beta. Um, I was busy. Uh, When did it start? Did it start Friday? What was happening Friday? Honestly doesn't matter right now. Anyway, let's go, let's add it for the weekend. Saturday, busy all day, out Saturday night. Sunday, busy all day. Got an opportunity to put it on last night. Tried to log in and it just gave me an error. Logged in, tried to log in like four times. Just got an error. Googled it. Uh, yeah. So, don't think Ubisoft are having the best of times at the moment because apparently they had a server issue, which meant that people couldn't log into the beta which was they were getting a lot of flack for. And in the end, I think they responded after like two or three days and just said, oh, we want to give people the best experience possible. So we've delayed the beta. Somebody had commented on the thing I was reading that was like, so you've delayed a beta till when? Because the game comes out in four days. It was very strange. Um, I never managed to log into it, and I'm pretty sure by this point in time that beta will be over. Released on Friday, I honestly can't say any more than I have such mixed feelings about this game. Um, I am not in the position to buy it. That is one of those. I've got a pile of games that I could potentially trade in to get it. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I am very much waiting on reviews on this one. And there's been a lot I've heard recently that suggests that they've just made a series of bad decisions. I was like playing, when I played the beta, I mean, I've talked about this, but they've made this decision to not put the AI team in the game. Which is going to make certain sections of that game impossible. It's baffling what they're doing with that game. Um, I imagine places are going to give it not great reviews. I mean, people are already doing a comparison between that and Wildlands and saying Wildlands is like three years old or something and is already, and is at this point, a better game than what they're pr- what they're going to put out um it's it's such a shame um so yeah had the beta didn't have a lot of opportunity to play it and as it was when i tried to play it i couldn't so have been playing borderlands 3 um i was explaining this saturday night to a few people uh, i was always like sam and ed about borderlands 3 and i was saying does feel a little bit like what Sam would sort of say, busy work the game. Um, It's very go here and do this. Um, And what it's telling you to do, it's a bit like, really? This is a mission to do? This sounds terrible. Um... It's got it's got all the issues that I thought it was going to have. You know, you get a, a million guns. Well, it's actually got a billion guns, but you get all these... You pick up all these weapons, and they're all terrible. And none of them are anywhere near as good as what you're carrying. And it seems to take a really, really, really long time to unlock the fourth weapon slot. Um, it's... 
its improvements are you can do a jump climb so you can jump and then press jump again near a surface and you can climb that that's an improvement apparently and the other one is you're not confined to pandora now you do leave the planet um don't know if i feel like that's a bit of a cop out whether they could have just given you other areas on pandora to explore or whether they felt at this point that they'd sort of covered the entire planet and it would be strange if they gave you a load more areas so they've just given you other places on other planets i don't know it's mildly different um it's nice to see some of the characters from the previous games um characters that i played as in previous games popping up um as like NPCs is it um it's just I played Borderlands 1 and I played Borderlands 2 loved those games until I tried to play them again I've been through this before I know I have Borderlands 3 already feels like I felt when I played those games again all I see is the flaws so that tells me that there wasn't much that they would have had to have done to remove those flaws. But this is a game that's priding itself on having not changed in all this time. And the reviews for it are like, and that's a good thing. It's like, is it? Um, maybe I'm just in the minority on this one. But, yeah. Um, so that's Borderlands 3. At no point... Am I going to tell you I'm going to stop playing it? Um, there's, there's a big levelling issue. Like, a lot of the enemies that you deal with are often a higher level than you. And there doesn't appear to be like the option to grind. Um, and I don't feel like I'm playing it wrong, so I'm not getting enough XP. It just feels like you are often on the back foot, which is a big issue for me with games. With certain games. Um, so that's Borderlands 3. Let's talk some VR. So, got two VR games. Um, the other day, what day was it? Friday or something. Again, doesn't matter. You, you, you know. Uh, the other day, uh, I just had a funny feeling. I was like, oh, I've got a strange feeling. Let me just check the Oculus app on my phone. Well, the idea around the Oculus stuff is, especially the app, is you're supposed to go to the app every day. Because, pardon me, they work on the principle that they update the app quite frequently. Weirdly, on that day and every day since, there's been loads of updates like, games have been updated, so apparently there's been free songs added to Beat Saber. Need to look into that. Um, there's been, like, this massive influx of new games. There was a game that I'd been waiting for that came out. And there has been episode two of the Star Wars VR game, Fade. Vader's Immortal? Vader Immortal? Jesus, why can't I get the name of this game? Two seconds, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Um, now I've got to go into the app. Whoa, what's Secret Agent Collection? No, that, not the time. Du, du, du. Vader Immortal. So, a Star Wars VR series, Vader Immortal. I've got episode one, as I'm sure you already know, because I will have spoken about it, because I... Uh, it was kind of a reason for getting the um, the Oculus, having played that. Um, so, played that, it was good. Um, the game's like, I don't know, like an hour. I think I finished it in 50 minutes. Um, did some good stuff. There was a lot missing from the story. Um, it's a st it's a bog standard Star Wars story. You play somebody who doesn't know they've got the Force until either you are confronted with a situation where suddenly you need the Force or somebody tells you you've got the Force. Um, in this, it's Vader. 
I'm not. I don't want to spoil it, but you know, if you know anything about Star Wars, that's the same story that they always use. So, um, in a way, it's kind of it's fair enough because it's you know you're just learning that you've got the Force. Um, but the first one was very lacking in the sense of um, you didn't get any force powers. You barely get a lightsaber. Um, but you do, and that's cool as fuck. Um, so that was that. Another thing in the game was the dojo, which is where you have a lightsaber and um, the little ball things from Star Wars, the psh, 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 ball things. You fight them, you fight um, the these droid things, you fight these droids, um, and it's just like lightsaber training. So when I checked on the Oculus app, it said that episode two of Vader Immortal, excuse me, <coughs> the body is losing the fight, um, and I'm warm. Um, <clears throat> It was saying that uh, episode two of Vader Immortal was out. Not coming soon. So there seems to be a coming soon section now. It was out. And I'm like, holy shit balls. Great thing about these is they're cheap. Downside is they're cheap for a reason. They are short. As I'm waiting for it to download, I bought it. It was £8. Um, you're paying for the Star Wars name. But you are paying for the product because they look amazing. They're very well made. Um, the biggest complaint is they're short. So whilst I was waiting for it to download, I was reading some of the reviews and people were going ape shit. Why do game developers do this? Why are you bleeding us for money? Release a full game. I'll pay $60 for it. Da 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 da. I'm like, yeah, it's eight quid. Um,. I don't think that's that's bad for playing. You know, you are playing. You know, you're playing around in the Star Wars universe. Um, this one actually gives you some force powers. Um, it's just the ability to move stuff, but it's an ability. The other thing, because obviously you can throw things, the other thing that was massively missing, like especially in the first one in the dojo, was you couldn't throw the lightsaber. They've added that into the second one. Massive improvement. Um, so, I played through the story. Somebody was like, the story's 25 minutes long. I'm like, that's a little disappointing, but you are playing Star Wars. Um, from the trailer, I was like, there's a Rancor, there's like stuff to do. This super cool looking lightsaber that I was like, I mean, it doesn't look like, it looks like a, like a medieval sword. It's just the blade part is a lightsaber. Um, didn't realise until I got it um, that it's supposed to be like an old, old, old lightsaber. Um, so the crystal that are in lightsabers, anybody that knows about Star Wars will know, the crystals, like, you can just see it, it's just there. And when you, like, turn it on, it, like, crackles with, uh, like, electricity before it, like, sparks up and then, like, little bits of electricity come off it. Super cool, super detailed. Um, you know, that's something that's been made with love um, right there. Play through the story was like, cool, it's short. Like, it's really short. But it's eight quid. So, you know, you, you get what you pay for sort of thing. I was like, yeah, whatever. Oh, you know, there's the dojo. Um, and it tells you at the end, it's like, you finish the story play the dojo. I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. Categorically, hands down, this is where your money's gone. So, in the first one, there was the dojo. I dabbled a little bit when I played on uh, my boss's Oculus. Um, and I dabbled a little bit when I got it. And that was it. It wasn't like, uh, it wasn't a real draw for me. I've played episode one a few times, like bits of the story, you can pick levels and stuff. Um, and that was kind of that. This, 
the 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 big draw of this game isn't the game it's the dojo so you fight these little uh little creatures that fly around shoot lava you fight the pss, 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 ball things you fight the droids but you can use the force you can throw the lightsaber you unlock new lightsabers like lightsabers from the from the films and stuff so you can get like anakins you can get um you know, I get choir guns at one point, different coloured ones, so at one point I had a red one. Um, you could change the gloves. Uh, you know, I've, I've spoken about the gloves before. But it's this challenge aspect. My right arm was killing me for two days from playing this. And then I still played it more because I was like, man, I want to play that. There's the challenge aspect you want to, because the more, the better you do on each of the rounds the better, like the more stars you get, the more stars you get, the more you unlock. So I was unlocking lightsabers, and I was like, well, what's the next lightsaber? So this is the this is hands down worth eight quid of anybody's money. If you are a Star Wars fan, if you are a VR fan, if you want to feel like a, a Jedi or a Sith or whatever, I, I was a bigger Star Wars fan years ago. I'm less so now because I feel that universe has been for want of a better way of putting it raped and pillaged i i prefer to remember it how it was um but who hasn't wanted to wield a lightsaber you know this feels like that you get to throw the lightsaber at things i was doing it the other day where it was like you know throw the lightsaber at all these enemies i didn't even turn the lightsaber on i was just throwing the like the handle thing still i did the same job you can grab robots with the force and crush them and then throw them it is fantastic um made my arm ache like a mother but so worth it so fun definitely one of those that you know challenge your friends to sort of thing um just loads of fun and again, I keep coming back to this thing. This is what's missing. It's what's missing from games. It's what's missing from TV. It's what's missing from films. It's what's missing from life. Fun. We forgot how to have fun. And things like this remind us of fun. Because it's fun. I'm going to stop saying the word fun. Um, so... If you're a VR fan, if you've got any of the VRs, the Oculus stuff, and you can get an, you know, episode two. Um, if you haven't played episode one, get it. It's worth it. It's eight quid. Get episode two definitely. Do the dojo. Well worth eight pounds. Um, no joke. So let's have a little look. So there were, that was uh, one of the games. When I was looking at all these updated games, because there's been this massive influx of games, it's like, I don't know whether they've been like holding on to a load of games, and then they've just dumped loads. Like I say, there's this coming soon section. You can sign up for, um, like, to be notified when some of these games are coming out. There's games that sound really interesting. Loads of stuff, like this huge influx of stuff. I'm like... Looks like it was the right time to get in on the uh, on the VR. The other game I got was a game called End Space. Um, works on the principle where that you are flying a spaceship, um, like a little fighter, and you shoot down other spaceships in space. Cool. Big um, selling part in this one is the you use eye tracking to track the enemies. So if you look to the right. Your ship will turn to the right, and also your aiming. Look to the left, up and down, all that. So you steer the ship by looking in the direction you want to go. You've got lasers and rockets and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's good. It's enjoyable. Um, I'm enjoying playing it. I have got stuck, um, so I need to go back and address the fact that I'm stuck on a mission. Um simultaneously at the point i got stuck and just before that i was like this game's a little a little samey and some of the reviews were saying that oh you know you just do the same thing over and over uh, and until i got stuck i was like yeah i can see what they mean you know you are just 
dog fighting in space. However, ironically, when I got stuck on this mission, the mission I'm stuck on, I keep dying because there's a lot to do. Um, so I need to go back and play that again. The eye tracking thing, uh, head tracking, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it, that's a really cool feature. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, really good, a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, flying around in space, it's it's good, it's fun. Um, yeah, uh, I'd certainly recommend it. Another one that wasn't super expensive, it was like, might have been 11 quid maybe. Um, another one, definitely worth a shot if you like um, dog fights. I don't mean dog fights, I mean like, you know, plane dog fights, and, and in this case, spaceship dog fights. Um, if, if that's sort of thing, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a big like, Ace Combat fan, so playing it in VR, I was like, yeah. Um, it's been uh, put put forward for a load of awards and stuff, so that's what it seems to say on the, on the screen when you go to buy it and stuff, so that's cool, cool for them. It's nice to see that people are, you know, people that are putting the effort in to make VR games are getting rewarded for it. Um, long lay it, man. Long lay it, man. Long may it last. Um, yeah, so that's VR. I downloaded a free. I thought I thought Leon might find it interesting. The a, v, a VR pet had a go on that, but it's one that wants you to move round. Um, you still do the teleport, which is the big way of moving in VR. You generally teleport places. But this wants you to move around the room, um, which I'm not a huge fan of because, like, depending which room I'm playing in depends what damage I can do by hitting things. Um, Got to get back to playing Beat Saber. Uh, I've unlocked a, a cool level in the campaign. Um, but... Um, didn't manage to do it a couple of times but I really need to get back to playing that um, and the challenge aspect uh, of, and the fact that apparently they've released the, uh, these new songs a new soundtrack so cool 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 um, so yeah that's games uh, TV wise I'm watching stuff that I can't imagine is massively interesting to many people um, I've been watching the evolution of hip hop um on Netflix, the first few episodes are really good. If you ever sort of wondered about um, like hip hop and um, like Tupac, Biggie, the the feud between those sides, you know, the different sides of the hip hop world, Snoop, Dr. Dre, things like that, <coughs> worth a watch. Will say it's got to a point now where it's talking about like the more a little bit more modern. Uh, when hip hop went commercial, and the people who were like hip hop's not supposed to be commercial, they went off and did their own thing. Got to that point, a little less interesting for me, um, but the first few episodes were fantastic, really enjoyable. Um, got some big names in the episodes as well. Um, so today I was watching that. I switched over to Amazon Prime. That was on Netflix. I switched over to Amazon Prime, and I'm watching. Now then, how many series of this have I watched? Is this the third series? 2017. Uh, anyway, I'm watching All or Nothing, um, the American football version, with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it's one of those things that when you watch these series, unless you're watching them at the time, you're always going to know whether the team, how far the team got, because it's a, it's the season after. Um, so I know that the Cowboys didn't go to the Super Bowl that year um, but it's like let's see how far they get sort of thing. the hardest one to watch was well I watched the one that was the Rams that was quite difficult because their season was over real early um, and the Cardinals one that was hard to watch because they, they were doing well um, I, I always feel sorry for for the Cardinals. They should do better than they do. Um, so that's sort of TV wise. Um, obviously you know I finished the boys. I was toying with. 
watching Preacher. Try and get that finished. I don't know if I can put myself through it though. Um, but I do have that kind of, uh, it's a little unfinished. Um, do sort of feel like I need a bit of something to get my teeth into. Keep toying with the idea of going back and watching Breaking Bad because the movie's coming out. Um, but that is hard going in places. So that's TV stuff. Um, normally, uh, at the back end of this podcast, I talk about going to the gym. You already know how much gym I've been doing. Um, I certainly don't feel as well as I did at the start of this podcast. And I, this, this whatever this is, has been creeping in all afternoon. Um, but I went swimming the other day. Took the daughter and the grandmother um, swimming. I didn't take the grandmother swimming, she took herself. Um, we, we, we took the daughter swimming. Um, and it was a, a sort of situation where it was, uh, there's two adults and one child. So, you know, I had the opportunity to go and swim, which is something I haven't done in a really long time. I've been swimming loads recently, but when you go swimming with children, it's like, uh, throw this ball, you know, jump me in, um, oh, let's have a race or, you know, it's very child orientated. You're not doing lengths. Um, so I had the opportunity to do some lengths. Um, and yeah, for the first first few, I, I felt quite old. I, like My shoulders were cracking and things were hurting and muscles were aching. And then I sort of remembered that, you know, swimming uses a lot more muscles than most other exercises. Um, you know, if you think about running... You, the muscles you're using are mostly in your legs. Um, whereas swimming uses legs, arms, etc. So I was like, well, you know, I, I would expect it to ache or hurt or things like that. Um, so I kind of got into it. I was doing, doing full lengths of the pool. Um, and I enjoyed it. It's something that, that I'm sort of like, yeah. I was feeling it. Um... That second day ache kicked in. Um, I think between that, playing the VR, um, and carrying children, my arms are just dead at the moment. Um, could only be a good thing, I'm sure. Uh, especially at a time that I've not especially been to the gym. Um, so yeah, rather than going to the gym, that I did, you know, Still doing exercise, out walking nearly every day. Although the weather's taken a proper turn this week. Um, so it's hard to get out uh, all the time. But I'm still getting out for walks. And uh, yeah, went swimming. Think I might go swimming tomorrow. Um, definitely depends how I feel at this point in time. Um, years gone by, I'd be like, Phew, this is nothing. I'll have a... I'll have a whiskey or five, and that'll kill it. Um, obviously, that's not an option now. Um, uh, and likewise, it'd be like, oh, I'll have a glass of orange juice. That'll sort it out. Can't do that either. Uh, so, yeah. Looking at my list, it's, uh, it, it, it's done, really. I have a feeling that of all the times that I say, oh, this one won't be a long one, and then it turns out to be... An average length. Ah, uh, you know, that's uh that's heading for average length. So, there we go. That is uh Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline Podcast. Thank you for joining me. As always, I appreciate it, and I will speak to you next time, next week, next whatever. Thank you, bye. So there you go, what do you think to that? Another one done, another one in the bag, another week gone. Getting close to the old uh, Christmas now, isn't it? YouTube watchers, look forward to seeing you over on YouTube. Make sure that you're subscribing and liking and commenting and sharing. Everybody jump over to thecookiecast.com. Check us out over there. Send us some love in the various ways that you can do that. And until next week, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Bye.